Well, fully functioning typewriters as well as some vintage display pieces for the avid collector, they're all on sale at a local shop. Uh, the place is called Typespace, and it has everything you need to write your next letter, essay, or novel in an old-fashioned way. Cor Harlan live this morning in Southeast Portland with more on how you can experience the typewriters for yourself. Oh, look Cor? at him, just clickety-clacking. Yeah, just typing away right there. <laughs> oh, man. I'll tell you what, once, hey, once you get started doing this, it's kind of hard to stop here from uh, Typespace here. We're at uh, Southeast 49th and Division or so, where we are... Typing letters. Ah, you got your keys kind of tied up. That's one of the old things. This is really cool. This is part of, a, for folks who are just tuning in this morning, this is kind of sort of a museum in one sense because they got typewriters here from the late 1800s to the 1900s and 1950s all the way through. So it's part museum, but it's also part retail space. They sell a lot of these. They service a lot of uh, typewriters that people may have in, in attics and basements. And Carl's kind of giving you a uh, shots of some of the, the, the various models as they go back through the years from the 20s and the 30s and the late 1800s. Boy, this is just, this is as much history lesson as it is a uh, typewriter plays, isn't it? It is, yeah. And not a lot of people really, uh, you know, schools don't focus on the history of the machines and uh, just the amazing inventors through time. I don't know if I introduced you. Tony Velopi is the, is the guy. I said your last name right? Correct. Yeah. Tony yeah. Velopi is the guy who, who kind of uh, has, has kind of taking an interest in taking these apart and putting them back together. And over the years, I want to I kind of <clears throat> illustrate for people some of the things that have evolved with typewriters. Mm -hmm. And I want you to kind of walk us through some of this. So let's, let's have you start down there sure. and show us some of the things and some of the ways in which typewriters evolved over the years. Yeah, this is an early typewriter from uh, 1890. It's a Merit typewriter. Uh, it was a U.S. production. Uh, this is what they call an index typewriter, um, to where you're actually selecting the letters as you slide across to punch them down. And then we're looking at a basic typeset here, like uh -huh. an old printing press. Yeah, yeah. Um, they thought this would be faster than handwriting. Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> it didn't stay the course. Uh, so as they advanced on, um, now this one here, this, this one, one was here. in Bram Sp Stoker's Dracula, right? Correct. It's from yes. 1902, this one here, the Oliver. Yep. And, it's, and, and this is, oh, this, this looks like a, you say it looks, it's called the bat, the right? The bat wings. The bat yeah. wings? Yeah. Definitely interesting approach where if you see on most standard typewriters, you've got the type bars that are coming up and directly striking the page. This is called a down strike, so if you see the type slugs move down to the paper, mm -hmm. coming in from the outside. Mm -hmm. So it was a different mm -hmm. approach to it. You have to kind of look up on your, mm -hmm. your machine right. as right. you're writing, as opposed to an under strike where you have to look right. under and make sure you're getting it. So they, they really did a great job with this, mm -hmm. adding a lot of things with margins and shifting yeah. and figure assignments. And there's a lot of difference in here too, just in terms of people's finger comfort, right? On yeah. the keys, that's a big deal, right? Because this Correct. is a precision yeah. business and people's fingers, this is a little different than that. A little bit, and these are things that we would have seen in the, maybe the mid-century, right? Yeah, these are 50s machines, 50s and 60s. Uh, when we get back to the 20s and 30s, you might see some gold key or some ringed keys. Mm -hmm. um, those are an older model. It's it's about, yeah, how, the, how your finger yeah. sets. Yeah. Um, I want to take time, too, before we got to get out of here, uh, to tell you that uh, we are at Typespace. This is at 49th and Southeast Division. We're at the community table here. so. Uh, Tony's made it set up here so that you can come in here, pull any typewriter off of the shelf oh, that yeah. you have a fancy for. You can come over here and you can type Carl a letter if you want. Sit down here at the community table. They've got paper for you. They've got envelopes for you, stamps. He can mail a, You can come in here and, and type away and stamp away a, a letter. If even you want, though, even though it might look like a museum, yeah. it's hands-on. I want you touching. You want you touching? It's pretty cool. It's just pretty cool. There's your letter. There's no bad words in there, by the way, either, Carl. So uh, <laughs> that's it from Typespace this morning, where you're kind of taking a walk back in history a little bit. And I'll tell you what, I, I still remember those home keys from, uh, from high school typing, as a lot of us of a certain age do. Uh -huh. uh, it's it all comes back. Before, uh, yeah, before keyboards and you could just backspace and stuff like that. This is right. all about whiteout and 
making sure you did it right. The I first was going to say anyway, he's got cool. he's got good form sitting right there on the home keys. Good job, Corey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I started out on a typewriter and I still only use about three or four fingers. You know, I, I never went to a formal yeah. typing class. Mm. We did. Did you do typing classes with the computer? Yes, computer. Because yeah. so I had I had typing on the computer yeah. classes, Fun and games. they would put that keyboard cover over the keys so you couldn't see the the yeah. letters on the keys. Yeah, like how many words per minute yeah. they would mm -hmm. test you. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. good nostalgia there. Well, let's talk.